Boom! Making sure your spray booth is explosion proof. Stay tuned. Bob Johnson with PK and W Railroad. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this content, please subscribe. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Give me some comments down below, positive or negative. I look forward to interacting with you. Part one of this series, I talked about the Ventwork spray booth that I'm building. In this part two, we're gonna talk about explosion risks associated with painting and how you can manage those risks. Now let's get one thing straight right off the bat. There's no such thing as an explosion-proof spray booth. There's always some way that you can create the conditions that might lead to an explosion. And yes, even if you're painting with acrylic paints in certain circumstances, as we'll go over. But when you're certainly when you're painting with solvent-based paints like I do, enamels, acetone-based paints, you've got to worry about a potential explosion when you're working with those. So, just like fire, when you are talking about an explosion risk with painting, you need to worry about the presence of fuel, an ignition source, and oxygen. So, in terms of an ignition source, explosive uh, gases and vapors can explode when there's a spark, open flame, or a heated surface. So even a brushless motor, which I believe has less of the spark risk associated as an ignition source, it can still have a short, which might cause a spark, I think. It could also have a lack of lubrication and actually become hot enough to ignite an explosive gas around it. So I think that's why brushless motor manufacturers don't say their motors are explosion proof. Additionally, you'll find that a lot of uh, paint booths put the brushless motors right in the air of the flammable gases. Is that safer than a brush motor where the brushes are not e in the airstream? I don't know. The Ventworks model has the brushes outside the airstream. That seems pretty safe to me. So that's where we are in terms of ignition sources. That's not really that easy to control. But what you can control and what science can help you determine is the risk of whether there is enough fuel present in order for an explosion to occur. So look, we're talking about your safety and the health of your safety, your family, your, your, your dwelling. Don't take chances. Watch this video and spend a few minutes at the, with the material in the description below and do a little math and a little thinking about your particular use of your spray booth and I think you'll reach the conclusion as I have that the explosion risk is very very small and that you can manage that down to almost zero but you just have to use common sense and you have to design your system if you're building your system appropriately so attached below is a chart from Matheson Trigas very big uh, purveyor of propane and other flammable materials um, about the lower explosive limit of, explo of flammable compounds. Now, flammable compounds have a lower explosive limit and an upper explosive limit. Below the lower limit, there's not enough fuel for an explosion or a fire to occur. Above the lower limit, but up to the upper limit, there is an explosion risk. Above the upper limit, the mixture's too rich to burn. And so you've got to worry about keeping the atmosphere in your spray booth and around your uh, fan motor below the lower explosive limit. So you have to look at your particular paint that you're using to do this analysis. Now, I paint primarily with acetone-based graffiti paint, which is covered in some of my other videos. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about acetone and its explosive properties first. So if you look at the Matheson Trigas chart, you'll see that acetone has to be, the lower explosive limit is 2.6% of the atmosphere has to be full of acetone in order for there to be an explosion risk. That's the lower explosive limit of acetone. 2.6% is the same 
as 26,000 parts per million. That's a lot of paint in the air. A lot of, a lot of the solvent in the air. And uh, I, I can tell you, after living through uh, some of the fire and smoke situations in San Francisco last year, which were well below 26,000 parts per million of smoke, that kind of concentration is very visible. Now, I also looked up on some websites, some government websites, about what the uh, effects would be on me of that level of acetone in the air. And at 10,000 parts per million, well below the lower explosive limit of acetone, eyes watering, coughing, irritation of the throat, <laughs> you know, I, I think even if I'm wearing a respirator, which I probably will, uh, I'm not gonna have my eyes covered. I, I'm gonna be able to sense when the uh, atmosphere is getting so full of acetone-based paint that there'd be an explosion risk. I wouldn't be able to stand it. So I really think there's not much of a chance that I'm gonna be painting a tank model or a train model or whatever it might be, and uh, I, I'm gonna have an explosion risk before I'm gonna be incapacitated before it gets to 26,000 parts per million. So look at your paints, look for your solvents on that Matheson Trigas list and see how big the explosion risk is for you and then act accordingly. And I have a study later on about a scientific test of a spray boot that you can use to compare to your situation in order to quantify the risk. Now, spray painting. Spray painting is a whole nother set of risks compared to airbrushing. When you're airbrushing, all you're worried about is solvent and air that you're using to blow the paint onto the uh, model that you're painting. So the only thing that's flammable that's being put into the air is the solvent. With spray paint, spray paint also has propellants in it. And those propellants too can be very flammable. And that's the warning for you all who are spraying acrylic paint out of a spray can. The propellants in there probably are highly, highly flammable and are explosive and so you need to be cautious. You need to look at the label to see what that's about. So I took a look at this Rust-Oleum lacquer paint. Toluene is one of the propellants. It's on the Matheson Trigas list. It's explosive. Those of you who follow my channel know that I use this Montana black acetone solvent paint to paint my models. Among other things, this spray can contains propane. Does that sound explosive to you? So, spraying with spray cans is obviously much more hazardous than spraying with your airbrush because the propellants are being put into the atmosphere. So there's a significantly higher risk. I'll probably do most of my spraying outside when I can, a very limited spraying in the spray booth with a spray can, um, just to avoid that risk. Attached below is what's called an industrial hygiene report. That was about a test done of a ductless spray booth using spray cans. And I think it's uh, valuable for you to take a look at that, take a look at the system they tested and compare it to your system. The fan they had in that case was using 117 cubic feet per minute. Pretty low. The Ventworks model that I'm building uses 200, moves 265 cubic feet per minute. So that's over twice as much air being moved in a smaller booth. So it's moving a lot of air. It's pulling a lot of air out of the, out of the environment. Now, this test in this industrial hygiene report was done using spray cans and they acknowledged the whole solvent propellant combination is being highly explosive and they estimated that the lower explosive limit of this combination was 1% or 10,000 parts per million. I think that's pretty aggressive, but nonetheless, that's what they that's what they estimated and so that's what they tested on. And they tested spraying uh, spray cans inside this uh, spray booth. Now, they found that with one can, using one can of spray paint, 
that the concentration of explosive material inside the spray booth was only one third of the lower explosive limit. So 3,000 parts per million with one spray can. With two spray cans, it only reached two thirds of the lower explosive limit. But to be cautious, they recommended that you don't do that. You only spray with one spray can. So it's hard for me to imagine spraying with two spray cans inside the Ventworks spray booth that I'm building. But this gives you, I think, a pretty good real-world test done of a relatively small spray booth uh, by uh, proper testing authorities with presumably pretty sophisticated testing instrumentation to figure out the concentration of expos explosive material in the spray booth. And they didn't get anywhere near the lower explosive limit. So that's also very encouraging. So here's some of the math that's involved. I know it's boring, so look at the description for more data. You need to know the molecular weight of your solvent, the actual weight of the solvent, as well as the volume of your booth for the calculation. Here's my airbrush capacity, the weight of the acetone, and the results of the calculation coming in at 10,000 parts per million. Remember, there's a lot of assumptions involved here that are very conservative um, and show that this is actually much safer. Um, no vent fan. The front of the booth is actually closed when, of course, the whole side is open, that there are no fumes passing through the filter to the back of the booth. I redid this calculation at two and a half times the capacity of my airbrush and it still came in at just under the lower explosive limit of acetone. I also calculated the efficiency of the fan here. I assumed that uh, my fan was not as efficient as it's rated because of static uh, pressure in the hose that vents it. But at 4.44 cubic feet for the entire spray booth, the fan is actually emptying the booth in one and a half seconds. So there's really no time for a significant amount of solvent to collect in the booth. Please remember, there's no such thing as an explosion proof spray booth, but there is if you use common sense and you do some math. So please take a look at the material in the description below. Look at the kind of paint you're using, the solvents that are involved, the propellants if you're using spray cans, whether or not there's an ignition source and whether you're managing that appropriately. But I think you'll find that if you manage your ignition source risk and you manage your explosive vapor concentration risk and make sure that you don't get anywhere near the lower explosive limit of the material you're using, that you're not gonna have an explosion. The third video in this series will be about actually building the spray booth. So I hope you look forward to that. Please subscribe, give me some comments. Until next time, Bob Johnson with PK&W Railroad signing off. Happy modeling.